Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, smallest range two. All right, so in this question, we're given an array of integers a, okay? So for each integer a i, we need to choose either x equals negative k or x equals k and add that x value to a i. And we're only going to do this one time. After this process, we still uh, we have some array b, okay? okay? So what's going to happen is that we're going to go to our array a, which has integers in it. We're going to go to each of the elements or values, and we're either going to add negative k or we're going to add positive k to it. And after this, we're going to end up with a completely new array, and let's call this b. So what we want to do is we want to return the smallest possible difference between the maximum value of b and the minimum value of b. Okay, so I think the question is a little bit confusing the way it's worded. So let's just go through a simple example. So let's go through this example over here. So which is a equals to 1, 3, 6 and k is equal to 3. Okay, so just ignore whatever is up top and let's just do it from here. So a is equal to 1, 3, 6 and we know that k is equal to 3. Again, just ignore the top part, sorry. Okay, so over here we have two options, okay? And let's write down what these options are. So we know that our k value is equal to 3. So at each number, okay, so at each of the numbers inside of the array, we have one of two options. So let's go to option 1. So in option 1, we're going to be adding the k value, which in this case is 3. And in option 2, we're going to be subtracting the k value, which in this case will be negative 3, right? So what exactly is the main goal of our question over here? So the end goal over here is we have to make this operation, so either operation 1 or operation 2. And after doing it, we want to find what is the range between the maximum number and the minimum number. So let's take an example, right? Just for the sake of an example, let's say we do 1 plus 3. So now that gives us a number of 4. Let's do 3 minus 3, giving us 0. And let's just do 6 plus 3, and that gives us a value of 9. So before we calculate what the range over here would be, what is the range of the original value? So in the uh, for the original thing, the range over here is going to be the smallest value, which is 1, and the maximum value, which in this case is 6. And the difference between them, which is 6 minus 1, giving us a value of 5. So in the beginning, we have a range of 5. But now, when we do, uh, did these operations, we actually ended up with the range of the smallest value being 0, and then 9, so 9 minus 0, giving us a range of 9. So obviously a range of 9 is greater, so that's not going to be our ideal solution. So hopefully you understood what our main goal over here is. And um, so I'm not going to go through how we're finding the solution yet. So let's just see what is the answer they got. So in this case, they had b equals to 4, 6, and 3. Okay, so they got 4, so they did 1 plus 3. Then they got 6, so they did 3 plus 3. And the other value they got was 3. So that's 6 minus 3, okay? So this is their new array over here. So what is the difference of this area over here? So the difference of this area is nothing else but the maximum minus the minimum, which is nothing else but 3. So this over here gives us a difference of 3 or a range of 3. And as you can see, that is already smaller than what we had originally. So in this case, we're going to output the difference over here, which is 3. And also make sure we're not outputting the B value here. We're only going to be outputting the difference, which in this case is 3. So that over there is the question and hopefully you understood what is uh, the main idea behind it. And another example, let's just say, so we have 0 and 10. So in this case, what they did is it 0 plus 2 and 10 minus 2, giving us um, 2 and 8. And then the difference between them is going to be 6. So that's what we output. Okay, so hopefully you understood what the question is asking for. And now let's kind of talk about how can we solve this question. Okay, so to understand how we can solve this question, let's go back to uh, this question here, okay? The first one. So A is equal to 1, 3, 6, 8, 12, and 13. So over here, we're going to be making an assumption. And that assumption is that A is sorted, okay? So uh, to solve this question, we're going to be sorting A beforehand. But before we actually go to the actual solution, uh, let's just understand what some possible uh, ways we could solve this question are. So at each uh, point, we have two options. And the two options that we have are going to be either plus k, or actually let me just change this into plus 3 and minus 3. Uh, let's just make it plus k or minus k, right? So over here, uh, I can either do plus k or I could do minus k, right? Pretty simple. So at each number, we have two options. So one thing we could do is 
we could kind of have like a recursive backtracking solution where we try out each and every possibility. So, but, uh, so that actually sounds pretty good for smaller numbers, right? But when you look at bigger numbers, this is going to increase exponentially. So the time complexity would be two to the power of n. And let's say we had something with a length of 100, we would have a greater than, so we would have, I think, more than 10 to the power of 30 uh, possibilities. So that's quite a bit, right? So that would be taking up a lot of time, and that's probably not the best solution. So now let's think of another solution. So the backtracking solution is going to take too much time. So now what we want to do in this solution over here is we're going to go through these elements one by one. And we're going to make another assumption. So let's just say we're iterating through these elements and let's just call this AI, um, or actually, no, let's just call it AI, okay? So AI refers to each of the indices or each of the elements inside of array A. And over here, the assumption that we're going to make is that this over here, so whatever AI is, um, okay, so this over here is the max value, okay? So we're going to assume that whatever is at AI is the maximum value. And based upon that assumption, we are going to find its minimum and maximum value. So how exactly is this going to work? So the reason this works over here is because we don't need to output the array B. Instead, we just wanna output what is going to be the smallest range that we are going to have. We just care about the smallest range. So let's see how this is going to work. So we want to find the minimum uh, value and we also want to be finding a maximum value, okay? Now, what exactly do these minimum and maximum values correspond to? So when I say minimum value, I mean the minimum value with respect to AI. Again, remember, we're taking the assumption that AI is the maximum value. So let's just start off with the maximum value. And actually, before we actually go uh, to this part here, uh, since we know that our array is sorted, what is going to be the smallest value? So we know beforehand it is sorted. So whatever is at the zeroth index is going to be the smallest value no matter what. Simultaneously, the largest or the biggest value is going to be whatever is at the very ending, which in this case is 13. So that is going to be the smallest and the biggest value um, that we have. So that is something that we want to keep in mind. Okay, and before we actually go through this, uh, I just want to say one last thing. And this is kind of a very intuitive thing, right? So let's just say we're assuming, so we don't care what these numbers are, okay? So let's just say it's some sort of area with numbers, okay? So let's just assume that whatever is over here is the maximum, okay? That's the assumption that we are making. So uh, again, remember that this list over here is sorted, okay? So we're assuming that this is the maximum. So how exactly can we make it the maximum when our list is sorted and there is stuff on the right of it? So to make it a maximum, we're gonna take this and we're gonna add K to it. That way it could possibly, uh, just make sure how I'm saying possibly, be a maximum. It doesn't have to be, but it could possibly be a maximum value. So let's say we make this plus K. In that case, let's just assume that this is now a maximum value over here. So now let's say what is going to be the minimum value for this over here? So the minimum value, assuming that this is a maximum, is going to be whatever our smallest value is plus k. And why are we going to add k to our smallest value? And the reason we're adding k to our smallest value is because we want to be as close as possible to this value over here. So that is one possibility, right? So we could go to our smallest value and add k to it, and that could be a possible value for being the smallest a value assuming that this element over here is the maximum. Now, what is an other possibility? So another possibility is that we could go to one value to the right, so over here, so this whatever value is over here, and subtract k by that. So those are two possibilities of finding the minimum, the minimum value that we have. Now, why does this make sense? So let's just look at a and let's take at six for an example. So at six, what is going to be the smallest value? So over here, we have the number six, and we're gonna assume that six is our largest number. Uh, again, this might not work out for some reason, but let's just assume that it is, okay? So we're gonna add three to it, since we're assuming it's the largest, so now it's going to become nine. So now we wanna find what is going to be the smallest number. So since it is sorted, the smallest number is going to be whatever is at the zero index, which in this case is one. 
But remember, we want to be able to make the smallest range possible. So for the smallest range, we're going to go to one and we're gonna add k. So in this case, we're gonna get one plus three, giving us a value of four. So four is going to be one possible, uh, possible value. Now, what is another possible value? So another possibility is that we go to eight over here and we do eight minus k. So that's nothing else but eight minus three, giving us a value of five. So those are going to be the two values, four and five. And what exactly are we going to end up choosing between four and five? Well, in this case, we're going to end up choosing the value four because we have to choose the minimum value over here. Okay, so uh, that's how we want to choose the minimum possible value. And those are going to be the only two possibilities for getting a minimum value. So now doing the same, keeping the same thing in mind, what is going to be our maximum value? Now, remember that the assumption we're trying to make is that this over here, the current element we're on is the maximum value. So let's say that this is the maximum value. So in that case, one of the possible solutions that we have is that we go to this over here and add k to it. So this could be a maximum value, but it doesn't have to be. And in order for this to be a maximum value, everything to the right of it, we're gonna subtract it by k. And the basic reasoning behind that is that we want it to be as close as possible to this value. And we know everything to the right is greater than it, okay? So instead of looking at each and every one of the elements, we are just going to look at whatever is at the very ending. So in this case, we're just going to go to this value, which is at the very ending. So this is going to be the greatest value. And over here, we're gonna subtract whatever this value is by k. And by subtracting it by k, what's gonna happen is we're gonna choose the maximum between this value over here, so whatever element we're on plus k, and the maximum value minus k. So if this element over here, even after adding k to it, is not the maximum, when compared to going to the largest value and subtracting it by k, then in that case, this is never going to be a maximum. So when that condition happens, so let's say this over here is the larger number, so then uh, even after subtracting k, let's say it is the larger number. So what we're going to end up choosing is we're going to choose the maximum. So in this case, we're going to end up choosing this, okay? So um, let's just go through this uh, more specific to this example in terms of the values that we have. So we have to start off by finding a value to start off with. So we're going to have a result value. And in the very beginning, result is going to be uh, whatever we start off with. So that's just going to be 13 minus one, the largest minus the smallest, and that is going to give us a difference of 12. Now, why does this, uh, and you might be like, we're not doing anything to it. So doing 13 minus one is the same as just adding K to everything or subtracting K uh, to everything. The difference is not gonna change. So in this case, we're starting off with the value of 12. And uh, again, our goal is to minimize the result. Okay, so now let's start off with our minimum value. Again, the assumption is that AI is the maximum value. So for our minimum value, we're gonna be taking the minimum between whatever the smallest value is plus K, right? Because we wanna get as close as possible to the maximum value. And the other possibility is going to AI plus one, right? And doing minus K. And you saw an example of this when I took six as the maximum and then uh, tried it out with eight and one, right? So this is another possibility going to the next value and subtracting it by k. Okay, so those are, we're gonna choose the minimum between those two. And for the maximum value, we're gonna take the maximum between a of negative one. And the reason we're going to negative one is because that's the very ending. And to that, we're gonna subtract k. And the other uh, value that we're going to be looking at, and again, the reason that we're subtracting is uh, because let's say ai is at six, everything to the right of it, we wanna get it as close as possible to six, and the best way to do that is subtract everything to the right of it by i. That's the basic idea. So that's what we're doing. We're doing 13 minus i. Uh, in other words, the greatest value minus, minus k, not i, sorry, k, not i. Okay, so the that's what we're doing. So going to the greatest value and subtracting it by k. And uh, the other option that we have is we're assuming that a i is the largest. And since we're assuming it's the largest, to make it the largest, we're gonna add k to it, okay? And we're gonna choose the maximum between these two. And at each time, our result is going to be equal to the maximum val minus the minimum value, okay? So this is going to give us one answer. 
But what we're going to be doing is we're going to comparing it. We're going to be comparing it with our original result at each point. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, with the previous result, and we're going to compare our new result. And each time we're going to be taking the minimum between those two. So let's just look at this exact same example and see what our result values will look like and which one we actually end up choosing. So over here, we have this, uh, the exact same area, 1, 3, 6, 8, 12, 13, and k is equal to 3. So in the beginning, our difference is going to be 12. And each time we're going to be choosing the minimum difference. So let's just look at one iteration. So let's say we go to our very first value over here. So that is going to be equal to 1. And over here, the two options for the maximum is going to be between 1 plus 3, which is 4, and 13 minus 3, so which is 10. So we end up choosing 10. So the maximum value we have is going to be 10, which is nothing else but 13 minus 3. And now let's look for the minimum value. So the minimum value over here could either be 3 minus 3, which is going to be about 0. And another possibility for the minimum value is going to be the smallest value. So in this case, 1 plus 3, which is going to be 4. So you take the smallest between those two, which in this case is 0. So 10 minus 0 gives us a result of 10. So that is going to be the result at that iteration. So each time we're going to be doing the same calculations and we're going to be having the smallest range at that by performing those calculations. So at this point, so at the next iteration, uh, we get seven. And after getting seven, we end up with six. So uh, at these points, we might have gotten different values, but we're still sticking with the number six because, well, so far six is the smallest. And at the ending of this, we end up outputting the value six, and that is exactly what the expected answer is. So now let's see how we can translate the same algorithm that we just talked about in terms of code. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through this because I think it's pretty simple once you understand what's going on. So the first thing is that we're sorting our area A, and after doing that, we're gonna start off by defining our result. And in the beginning, it's just going to be the maximum value minus the smallest value, and in simple words, the maximum is whatever is at the very ending, and the minimum is going to be whatever is at the zero of the index. So that is going to be our result. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of a for loop and we're going to be going through the indices and we're going to start off at the zero to index and we're going to go all the way up to the last but one value. So that's what we do length a minus one, right? So we don't want to go up to the very ending. And the reason for that is because we have to account for the index plus one value over here. Okay, perfect. So over here, uh, we have to find the minimum value. And it's the same thing that we talked about earlier. And this is over here, the maximum value. And we calculate that. And then we're going to take our result. And for the result, we're going to choose the minimum between the previous result and the currently formulated result that we got. And that's nothing else but maximum value minus minimum value and the previous result, which is, uh, well, just rest. Okay, and we're going to do this for all these iterations. And at the very ending, we're going to return whatever result value we have. Okay, and uh, as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.